Hi guys, this is Wandering Into the Woods, a podcast brought to you by Adventures with BG. We are your hosts, Linda and Jarrett. Hey everyone. Now due to COVID-19, we are seeing more people outside, spending time in their gardens or getting some exercise. We've also been pleased to see more people walking their dogs. And while we're excited to see this, it, we are here to give you and anyone out there who's new to walking their dogs some advice on how to ensure you and your dogs have a good time outside with minimum conflict. If you have a dog that's not used to being walked, is adopted, and or is untrained, you might find this advice particularly helpful. Now, just to give you some background as to where Jared and I are coming from, um, we are uh, more or less experienced dog owners. We've had two terrier dog mixes. Uh, which we adopted as adults. We first adopted Angela in 2011, and she was two years old at the time. And a year later, we adopted BG, who was four years old at the time. Wasn't it more than a year? It could have been more than a year, now that I'm thinking about it, because they're about the same age. So it might have been two years later. Yeah. And um, so we adopted them as like as i said as adults and um so they came with their own sets of issues they are both um a little defensive and protective of of us and when we're outside angela well both outside and inside angela can be uh dog aggressive and resource possessive as well so we um have to be very careful especially with angela because she can get very aggressive with other dogs really fast. BG, it's more of a touch and go a situation. Sometimes she seems to be okay with other dogs and sometimes not. Now, in my experience, uh, they've been very good with humans. They love humans. Um, I've been in the unfortunate situation where um, children have come up to them um, inadvertently and where I wasn't aware of it I turned around and there was a child with Angela yeah and um, Angela just total sweetheart with them and she loves hanging out with them so point of it being our dogs are total people sweethearts and but Angela does have some aggression issues that we are very cognizant about and try to be very aware about um, that being said because of that we are always very good about it, having them on a leash and we are trying to always be on the lookout for any possible perceived threats that might trigger Angela and or might trigger BG. And recently, Jared had an incident um, involving other dogs, and we were fortunate that they were on the leash. Um, Jared, do you want to tell us more about that? Sure. We were out on our morning walk. Um, and in the distance, we saw a smaller person, which turned out to be a old lady. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we were walking, they, as we got closer to her, as we were walking, she was kind of acting weird and like trying to pull her dogs to the side. So we like stopped, hoping she would turn off a couple of side roads, but that didn't happen. So she kept coming slowly and kind of acting weird. Um, at first, I thought it was more like a you know preteen with long hair based on like the size but that's not what it was when we got close mm-hmm. um so she just kind of stopped at some point and like went behind a tree so. and her dogs were leashed right yeah they were both leashed okay uh so we were like uh, so i was like well she just stopped there and we have nowhere to go so let's just try and get past her quickly mm-hmm. um so we started a little bit closer and about that point um her dog started pulling towards her and she was just kind of staying on her feet but still getting drugged just screaming no 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 repeatedly i tried to i was like well maybe she'll you know get enough ground and me and the girls can back up and get away but at some point she just let go of the leashes Mm -hmm. i don't know why wow um so both of her dogs who were both chonks came Mm -hmm. running over um, one went for Angela, and that was kind of the first one I blocked because of the huge size difference. And I guess it kind of spun it out further. Uh, mm-hmm. Then I kind of lost sight of them and went towards BG because that dog was being way more aggressive to her and was like nipping at her. Mm-hmm. And somehow I put my arm down to get in between them, which I did. And one of the dogs kind of grazingly bit me 
in my elbow area, mm -hmm. inside of my arm on the elbow. Um, at about that point, Angela's dog was, attacker was nowhere to be seen and she had come back and was either going to attack BG or was in the process of helping BG. Uh, and then at that point, I was able to kind of push the dog away after a second swipe. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, the lady was able to get control of her dogs again, kind of. Uh, so we started walking away and she somehow lost them again. But Did she, was she shouting anything at she you? Was she was still like, no, and saying sorry and stuff. Uh, but she dropped the leash again. Angela's dog attacker was like, whatever, I'm done with this, and mm -hmm. didn't really do anything. The one that went for BG like came running over again, but I just grabbed it by its collar and kind of helped it, held it in place, and which seemed to work. And the lady came over and grabbed both of her dogs, and we hauled butt out of there because... I didn't want those dogs getting loose and deciding they were really going to kick it up a notch and be aggressive again. Oh, wow. It sounds like a, like a challenging experience, uh, both for you and for the dogs. And when you guys came back, um, BG and Angela seemed to be uh, stressed out. They were licking a lot and uh, they were apprehensive. And fortunately, it seems like uh, they didn't actually, the dogs didn't get any bites at our dogs, no. although you did get bitten for sure. I know you it as a graze but it's it did leave a significant bruise and a mark in your arm um so it I'm, I'm glad you guys turned out to be safe and um that that dog uh, seems to have been vaccinated because <laughs> you haven't shown any symptoms of rabies but yeah. um you know this incident uh, made me realize and other incidents i've run across as i've literally been running outside i made me realize that we need to help out um some of the owners out there who um, are new to walking their dogs just as we were at, at some point. Um, so that being said, and that story having been shared, uh, we thought we'd uh, share with uh, our listeners a few tips for walking their dogs. Um, so uh, before you take your dog on a short walk, think about the following. Ask yourself, are you strong enough to hold on to your dog as they try their hardest to pull away from you? That old lady was not. Yeah, and I bring this up because uh, you have to keep in mind you, your own size and relative to your dogs and their strength and their size. And uh, imagine them pulling at their hardest as they are seeking the thing that they most want because you will likely run across that scenario when you are walking outside. And if you are not a professional dog trainer or your dogs are not professionally trained, um, or you're, you know, you're dealing with some rescues like we are, um, you will run into situations where they do want to run after things. Um, and that brings me to my next question that you need to consider. Um, are, what are your dog's triggers? Are they likely to run off um, because of squirrels, because of strangers, or because of other dogs? What is it that makes them want to pull away from you and pull at their leash? Uh, will you be encountering such triggers while you're out there? Most likely, yes. Um, and do you have a plan for preventing such triggers or how to deal with them when you do see them? Here you ran, uh, as Jared said, he ran into the situation where uh, he couldn't um, walk around this lady with the other dogs. So he was holding on to our dogs and trying to walk past them as soon as he could. And that was his strategy to try to prevent um, the incident that ended up occurring anyway. Um, you know, and he was left there in an unfortunate situation where he didn't have another exit. But um, that's another thing for you to consider. Think about, are there alternate routes to prevent the triggers that you know will set your dogs off? And can you take them? And if you can, go ahead and take them. Uh, or, or think about how you would take them because you know, right now that you're planning before your walk. Also, check your leash. Is it strong enough to hold your dog as they pull their hardest? And is it easy to maneuver? We've seen a lot of dogs, uh, dog owners with uh, retractable leashes. Um, and while they seem convenient, I find them burdensome when you're trying to walk your dog outside out on, on the trails and you're trying to keep control of your dog. Um, I find that the most helpful 
um, way to walk your dog is by having a simple leash, a simple old fashioned leash that is strong enough to hold on to your specific dog. So, um, we have a different thick, uh, different thickness of leashes for um, our bigger dog and for our smaller dog. And what I do is I always make sure that I am uh, grabbing the leash with my hand and that I also wrap it around my wrist at least once. And I do that because I am not built the way Jared is. And when I'm walking two dogs, I know that they are stronger than me and might get, you know, away from me. And so uh, having a grip and a wrap around my wrist um, helps protect me in those incidents where they uh, have tried to run off for squirrels or for other dogs. Um, and uh, it, it's avoided, fortunately, a lot of um, potential, uh, potentially bad situations. So, um, and, and also make sure you have your doggy bags with you. Make sure you're a good neighbor. Um, so, uh, so now that you're that you've checked for um, triggers and that you know you're strong enough to hold on to your dog, um, you have to and you have your bags ready. So now that you've made sure that you're strong enough to hold on to your dog, you've made an assessment of your dog's triggers and you've planned for what you're going to do when you encounter such triggers. Um, you have your leash ready and you have your doggy bags ready. You're ready to go out and walk your dog. Now hold your leash, as I said, with the grip and wrap it at least once around your wrist. And as you're outside, be aware of your surroundings. Do not be on your cell phone. Do not get distracted. Just enjoy the moment. Enjoy your walk with your dog and uh, be watching for any potential um, threats or triggers out there that might set your dog off, especially when it's your first couple of walks outside. Um, be ready to fend off any unleashed dogs. Unfortunately, uh, we'd like to give our dogs more credit than um, they sometimes might um, deserve or, or are ready for, and we, Think that they're ready to be unleashed and unfortunately that causes very friendly dogs to approach aggressive dogs such as our Angela and that can cause issues and both to protect yourself and your dog it's just best if everybody is leashed and uh, you make sure that um, your dog does not approach other dogs and that other dogs don't approach your dog and you should expect evolution to outweigh training almost all the time. So what does that mean? So the evolution for the hunt or the chase is going to win in almost all dog versus training. Mm. Just like BG has done a couple of years of agility training and knows quite a few commands. But if you let some furry creature run in front of her, she's going to forget all of her com commands and she's going to bolt off. Mm. So she probably would have failed... One of those police dog schools. Possibly, but <laughs> most dogs would. Yeah, and yeah for people sure. People give them way too much credit for, I mean, they have training, but evolution's going to trump that when it comes down to the moment. Right, right. Um, so that being said, always be ready to fend off any unleashed dogs. Um, also, I mentioned earlier, look out for unsupervised children. Um, parents sometimes lose track of their kids. And kids uh, usually love puppies and they of all sizes and all breeds. So they'll come up to them and, and say hi to them and start touching them. And uh, we're very fortunate that we have dogs that love children and are infinitely patient with them. But you don't know if your dog uh, might be aggressive. So look out for any unsupervised children. But most importantly, have fun. Enjoy the walk with your dog and... Enjoy being out there in nature with them. I'm sure they're enjoying that time with you as well. Walking your dog is a great and pleasant experience we're fortunate enough to have during these stressful times. Enjoy it safely, maintaining your social distance. If you like what you heard, don't forget to visit our website, adventureswithbg.com, or look us up on Instagram, adventureswithbg. Stay safe as you wander into the woods.